Okay, so we have an old 2001 Vauxhall Astra uh, 1.6 petrol in the workshop. Um, we, about a month ago, um, this, uh, the new ECU fitted, uh, wouldn't rev, would barely idle actually, it would miss firing like mad. Um, so we, not new ECU, we sourced a second hand ECU. Um, programmed and coded it. The thing is, these used to be really cheap, second-hand ECUs, but as they've got older, there's less and less available. It's about 100 quid to find a second-hand one, then you've got to decode it, code it, stuff like that. Uh, anyway, now it's back, um, a couple of weeks after having the new one fitted, every so often a little spanner light would come on and it would have a lack of power. So we're going to go through uh, what we've got. So, full code red, full codes red, sorry. Um, so, accelerator pedal, um, correlation, voltage low and limp home because of the electronic <sighs> throttle performance limited, but that's because obviously it's got a pedal related issue. Now, um, a lot of people will just jump to chucking another ECU in because they're fairly common for these fault codes being ECU related, these ones, or fan control fault codes, stuff like that. But we shall test it properly because it may well be a pedal fault, a wiring fault, it could be anything. So we'll go through the methods of testing. Okay, so first thing we do is we check our live data, see if the pedal's working. So foot off the pedal, foot about halfway down, foot to the floor. That's operating nicely, the two channels both working. Calculated road is in the right position, right throttle body, uh, foot to the floor. Position sensor one changes, position sensor two changes. So everything's currently working. Um, so now we need to have a play and get it to fault on us. Right, so all I'm doing now is I'm going around wiggling some wires while heating it up just to see if while I'm wiggling and tapping the ECU and the throttle body, um, if I get any differences in my live data readings and I will do the same at the pedal and the pedal connector um, may have to go out and get this car hot for the fault to occur but we shall see no changes so far right let's have a look at the pedal so under the car on the pedal I'm watching my data Tapping things, shaking things, see if there's any bad connections. It's currently all right. So I think what I'm going to do is um, that's all good. Is leave it sit here for a while, get hot, and let's see if things change. Uh, if there's no change in that, I'm going to go for a road test, um, and let's see what happens from there. So after a little while of Warming up and playing the accelerator. We've started to get sensor two dropping out. So then we recreate it. There we go. At the same time, it causes the engine to misfire like mad. And um, let's pick it back up again. So on to checking some voltages and feeds. Okay, so what I've done is I have pinned out our ECU. These are the inputs from the throttle pedal. Uh, the reason I choose to start this end is comfort. I find this nice and easy. Prefer it to crawling around underneath the dashboard, being very claustrophobic and stuff. Uh, if we find a fault, I'll have to go under the dashboard. Um, if we like the pedal side of things. Um, so yeah, so they're pinned out, that's the two uh, channels for the accelerator pedal position sensor. You may also notice I have switched tools. Um, this is only for one reason, just to show people out there something you may not know on that this can do, which I find a handy function, I don't know why they don't have this in their little instructional guide. It does not work if you go into scope, you have to go into guided component tests doesn't matter what you pick because you can just go in there and use it as a scope change the change it to whatever you want so I've already gone into accelerator pedal position but it's not set up how we want so we'll go in 
Go to open the meter, it doesn't matter what you go in as because you can change the meter settings to whatever you want. And let's make that full page just so we can see. So we're going to change that to a 10 volt setting, I know it's 5 volt sensor, but just to fit it on the screen, we're going to open another channel again, um, make 10 volts, and then move them up the screen to somewhere we can see them a bit better. Then, if you press that button. It moves it to another screen. So you go in here, back. Oh no, sorry, wrong button there. Um, Pure meter again. Let me just quickly reset it up again, full screen it. We don't want 20 volts, we want 10 volts. Good. We want another channel. Again, we don't want that channel. It's hard looking at a phone and this at the same time. Change that again. 10 volts. Done. We've got two 10 volt settings. We want them in a position where we can see them clearly. We press that button there that says meter. Put it into a new screen. You shrink it down. You go to your home page. Go back into your scanner. Go into your data. I've already set up the PIDs I want, which is just the two accelerator pedal position voltages you can then do that which is very handy you can watch the live data which is what the ECU is seeing and the actual um, information you're recording on the scope so now that that's all set up all I have to do is find a volunteer so I've got my volunteer and as you can see we've got our live data here uh -huh. Um, okay, give it half throttle and full throttle. Okay, and release and start the engine. Oh, I couldn't crank it over, it's lost everything. There we go, let's get retry. Open that back up. So, oh, wrong one. According to what the ECU is seeing, it's seeing zero volts on sensor two. And that's about right. I give it a bit of throttle. There you go, it's just came back to life there for a second. Both. Let it idle. A little bit of throttle. Okay. Engine off ignition on. And full throttle and hold it. Oh, it's just crashed out, but as you can see, position sensor 2 is doing nothing. So now we need to check the outputs. We've now moved our pro points to the outputs. So these are the outputs that are going to the pedal. These stand out what the revs are if the engine's on or off, as long as the ignition's on, they're just gonna, supposed to be a steady five volts. So we have five volts on one and nothing on the other. Whilst, so that reads zero at the same time as, da -da -da, the pedal sensor is reading zero. So there's no output feed to it. Now, May still not be the ECU. Next, we need to check the Earths. But first, let's just see if that goes back to normal on sweep. Give it a chance. If we give it a chance to cool off. Um, and that bit's crashed out again. Every time you turn the ignition off and on on one of these, this happens. Come on. Yep, retry that. We open this and that. Well, if we watch this reading there, at the same time as that starts to read, the green line should spike back up. So, let's just see what happens as it cools off a bit. I think the heat inside these kills them. There we go. Instantly, same time, 
outputs 5 volts and starts to read a pedal position sensor. So that has now eliminated our pedal and left us with either a faulty ECU or a bad earth. So next we'll check the earths. Checking the ECU earths is a very straightforward procedure. We leave uh, one of them in the good 5 volt live that we've got. There's only two ECU earths on this. Uh, so we get our earth and plug it into those. Firstly, we can make sure that the body is earthed. So that's, that's just onto the body of our ECU, so the ECU body is earthed. Then we go into the correct terminally pins, which is 33. There. Again, so I'm out of it, I'm in it. So that's a good earth. And the other one is pin 50 which, if I'm not mistaken, is somewhere in there. I have no idea where it is. I'm gonna to have to pull it out and have a look. Do, do, do. So let me find out where 50 is. So we know where our terminal, f uh, our uh, pin 50 is now. Uh, just make sure our connection is still good. Yeah, on the live one. So we go in. To our pin, just there. There you go, I'm out of it, I'm in it. That's both Earths checked. The ECU is Earthed, as I'm just checking now. It's just on the body of the ECU. There you go. That's me shaking it about. It's me just on the body. So, we have done pretty much everything we need to do to confirm the ECU is faulty. Firstly, we kind of did it backwards. We checked our uh, inputs from the pedal. Um, we could see that as it warmed up, it was dropping out. So then we checked our outputs to the pedal, and it, that was dropping out. So it just eliminates the pedal itself. No need to get under the dash, start stripping things and be uncomfortable. We've checked our earths, they're all good. Now we could go on and check some more uh, lives and inputs to the ECU, but I don't believe we need to. We need to get another ECU.